drunkenness of the mind. But wine drunken with excess make it bitterness of the mind, with brawling and quarreling. See, that that's what we got the problem with. Christ. 
drink ye all of it. Verse 28. Verse 28. For this is, the, this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many of the remission, for the remissions of sins. But I say unto you, I will not drink henceforth of this fruit of the vine until that day when I drink it new with you in my Father's kingdom. You know, y'all can drink all that. Next time I toast up with y'all, it'll be in the kingdom. That's right. No more willing we make a cut. But the Lord himself will be drinking wine with us if we find words to make it. Christ will be drinking wine, new wine, in the kingdom of God. It can't be about this. Right? And that don't mean we're going to be drunk either. We're going to be drinking new wine with the Lord. Read that verse 30. That's in the Hold it down, y'all. Verse 30. And when they had sung a hymn, they went out into the Mount of Olives. See, then that's going into the trail and all that after that. Read 1 Timothy 5, 23. Deuteronomy 14, 24 to 26, about the strong drink. That's that boy Obed drink. What's that drink you drink, Obed? I love this. What you drink back up, man? <laughs> Let's get it. Verse 75, verse 23. Yeah. Deuteronomy 14, 26 to 28. First, first Timothy, first Timothy five twenty three. First Timothy chapter five, verse twenty three. Drink no longer water. Timothy chapter 5 verse 23. Drink no longer water, but use a little wine for thy stomach's sake and thy often infirmities. See that? For your sicknesses and all that, wine is good for you. Majority, uh, majority of our sicknesses come from our belly. Majority of our sicknesses are food born and they come right from the belly. That's right. Wine, wine got a substance in it that, that actually kills cancer. You know what I'm saying? I forgot the exact name of it, but that's why wine is used for your infirmities. Drink water for your infirmity and drink wine. Yep. Why is the Lord saying that? You see what I'm saying? You can drink yeah, some type of antioxidant stuff. Yeah. You can drink, just know your limitation. But you got the Lord telling you you can do certain things, but in the same instance, be careful. That's right. right? You take your cheese in that all the time. Right. You, you know what I'm saying? You're like, oh, Lord, let me do something that could potentially come on me. Right? right? You tell your children all the time, hey boy, be careful before you fall off that bed. <laughs> right? You can jump off the bed. Huh? Be careful. You might fall off the bed. Right? Same with the Lord. You can drink. Just don't overindulge. Be careful. A lot of things can happen. Alright? So we read that first Timothy, right? Mm -hmm. Alright. Deuteronomy 14 is next. 26 to 28. Then we got another one about the renewing of minds. We're going to get on out of here. But again, being reborn or born again means the renewing of your mind. That way you live the rest of your life conform to the will of the Most High. In order to do that, you got to know the will of the Most High, which is heard, keep his commandments. Follow his son Christ. Believe in Jesus the Christ. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. All right, let's get it. Who got it? All right. Book of Deuteronomy, chapter 14, verse 26. And thou shalt be stoned, which means oh. used, that oh. when Deuteronomy 14, verse 26, and what's taking place here is somebody coming to Jerusalem to keep a feast day. Or if they couldn't make it to Jerusalem to keep a feast day. Either way, it's being explained right here. And what they were allowed to do during the feast, which is a high holy day. All right, Deuteronomy 14, bro. Go ahead. And 
and thou shalt bestow that money for whatsoever thy soul lusted out. Uh. For oxen, or for sheep, or for wine, or for strong drink. Or for what? Or for strong drink. So now we see a difference between the wine and the strong drink. And the Lord actually allowed us to drink strong drink. Right? But be careful. You gotta know your limitation. Right? Know your limitation. But yes, you can't drink. Just don't be drunk. That's right. What y'all say today? About to turn it up, huh? Turn it up. <laughs> uh, now you don't want to be too turned up. <laughs> Alright, come on, bro. Or for stone drink, or whatsoever thy soul desire, and thou shalt eat there before the Lord thy Elohim, and thou shalt rejoice thou and thine household. And the Levite that's within thy gates. That's what the preacher right there. Preach, even the Levite. Him too. Uh -oh. Come on. Thou shalt not forsake him, for he have no part nor inheritance with thee. None. At the end of three years, thou shalt bring forth all the tithe of thy increase the same year, and shalt lay it up within thy gates. And that's another topic in hand. Right. Actually, our brother did a class called Will a Man Rob God yeah. on YouTube. The uh, society's perception of what tithing is, that's something different as well. Mm -hmm. You know, we'll get to that. We'll get to that when we get the chains. So that's right there. That's that wine. That's that strong drink. We're going to John 3 next. Talking about this being born again. We're going to end with 1 Peter 3. We're going to call it quits. So, Rob, who asked the question about wine, so, I mean, are you made men with us or you have something else in the script to say you shouldn't drink? John chapter 3. John chapter 3, right in verse 1. The book of John, chapter 3, verse 1. We almost done, y'all almost done. Sometimes class go like this. We'll put a topic up and then hey. Flock need to get edified from some else. That's right. So it's spirit led. Get it done. Right. Let's get it done, brother John 3. John 3 and 1. There was a man of the Pharisees named Nicodemus, a ruler of the Jews. Brother Nicodemus had a lot of rank amongst our people. He was an Israelite, but he was part of the Pharisee mindset. Alright? Come on, brother. The same came to Jesus by night. By what? By night. So he had to walk around at night sleeping. Because during the day, everybody who knows who he is uh, associate him with Christ. So he got to come around at night. He got to sneak around. Yeah. Right? Because the Pharisees can put you out there little quick. That's right. You can kick out your little Facebook group or whatever. <laughs> that was what the Pharisees back people doing. They will kick you. Like if you was dealing or even talking to somebody who they believe was a heretic, like they believe Christ was a heretic. You know what I'm saying? They would kick you out of their clique, their social status. And you would be degraded socially. Right? All because you said that yeah, Christ is the Son of God. Right? right? So now you got a Pharisee who know this, but he got to come around at night. You got to sneak around. All right, come on, bro. The same came to Jesus by night and said unto him, Rabbi, we know that thou art a teacher come from God, for no man can do these miracles that thou doest except God be with us. So he had to the truth, right? Yeah. You have to be in the Most High, sent from the Most High. We ain't never seen it done like this else. That's right. We ain't never seen it done like this. No. All right? Come on, brother. Jesus answered and said unto him, Verily, verily, meaning truly, truly, Come on. I say unto thee, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. Question. Born again, right? You read Romans 12, but you don't live the rest of your life conformed to this world about the renewing of your mind, to transform your mind by the renewing of God. Right? The way you live the rest of your life according to the will of God and not man. 
Right? So Christ is saying right here, except a man be born again, if you look it up, the phrase, it means born from above. The changing of your mind. Alright? So unless a man be born again, born from above, the renewal of his mind. Come on, brother. Verse 4. Nicodemus saith unto him, How can a man be born when he is old? Can he enter the second time into his mother's womb and be born? Now, this is a brother that has great among his brethren. But he, the Lord was so far over his head, he couldn't understand. What, what's all this being born again and stuff? What do I crawl back into my mother's womb? Right. And right. <laughs> Showing you the Lord was speaking spiritual about this being born again. That's right. You were talking about physically popping your grown self hop back in your mom's <laughs> We're going back out. We're talking about that. We're talking about changing the mind. So guess what? The point of obeying is not the spiritual obeying. That's right. You feel me? What, 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 what Kelvin takes you to do in the world. That's right. He don't do that. That's that inside. The changing of mind. All right? So except a man be born again, he won't see the kingdom of God. Right? How can you be born again when you cry and get on the That's the next verse, brother. Verse 5. Yeah. Jesus answered, Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Like people confuse that with being water and baptized. Right. It said, it said, it said, be born of water and spirit. Mm. To be born of water and spirit. What does that mean? Uh oh, look at that. What, what, what does it read about the water and the spirit in the Bible? Right. You see that? Let's go ahead and pull it. Ephesians chapter 5, verse 26. That he might sanctify and cleanse it with the washing of the water by the word. The water is compared to the word. I got two more. Mm -hmm. this, this is Psalms 119, verse 9. Wherewithal shall a young man cleanse his way by taking heed thereon to according to thy word. So how do you cleanse your way? By taking heed to the word of God. Mm -hmm. By taking heed to it. John, John chapter 15, verse 3. That you are clean through the word which I have spoken unto you. Hey, Grandpa, John 66, 63. Three. I'm already glad that got quick. So, it's right. about this. We got the word being compared to water and spirit. Amen. Lord, this day, unless you're born of water and spirit, you can't get into the kingdom of God. Mm. Right? The book of John, chapter 6, verse 63. It is the spirit that quickened, the flesh profited nothing. Mm. The words that I speak unto you, mm. they are spirit, and they are life. So what the Lord is saying to you is you have to be born and have to apply the word of God to your walk. From the moment you start getting down with Christ, the word of God has to be applied to your life in every aspect of it. Right? The changing of mind. No, I can't roll with y'all no more. No, I can't do that. Now what are you doing at this point? You're, just, you're discerning between right and wrong. And you're even looking down the line. If I get that call with them, they're going to get pulled over. That car's stuck. You feel me? The skillet don't got no car. They get pulled up in a Cadillac truck. That car's stuck. Dead. I'm the bread of life. You tell a whole bunch of 
Israelites this who don't acknowledge you as the Messiah. I'm the bread of life. You come to me, you do. You got to eat my flesh and drink my blood. So in the corner, you're going to think, the Lord talking about cannibalism. Blood drinking. You got to get through the story. At the end of the story, he told you, look, it's the spirit that quick. This flesh don't mean nothing. That's right. We ain't telling you to nibble on his arm. Yeah. Huh? He telling you the bread symbolic for my body. The wine you drink symbolic for my blood. If you acknowledge that and understand the truth concerning that, you good. That's the first time you heard Edward, please. <laughs> Alright, come on, brother, again. We're in uh, John 3 and chapter, I mean verse 6. Everybody get back there? Should not perish, 
but have eternal life. See, so what's connected to the belief in Christ is eternal life. Whosoever believe, huh, you can get eternal life. That's right. But guess what? Once the belief comes, then comes the work. Yeah. People doing it backwards. The Pharisees never doing it backwards. They were saying, we can work, and then after all this work, I can gain faith. And then I'm justified. No, you got to believe it first. Like Abraham, he believed it. Lord told him this is what it's going to be. Count it. He said, look, if you can name the stars and count the stars, guess what? You know the number of your descendants. Mm. Abraham believed it. He didn't doubt. He didn't wait. But he believed it. It was counted to him for righteousness. Right. Based off his faith and his belief. And then when you read about his discipline and what he did, he kept the commandments of the Lord. Right. So you see, belief or faith and the commandments. Mm -hmm. That's what it is. Faith and works. Faith without works is dead. Lord, they come to give you dead faith. All right, come on, brother, let's get it. Verse 16. For God so loved the world. The, the who? The world. Come on. That he gave his only begotten son. Uh -huh. That whosoever believeth in him uh -huh. should not perish, right. but have everlasting life. That word, world has over 14 different definitions. One of them is a distinct uh, society and ethnic group of people. The word, the word, has over 14 different definitions. Feel me? You got Wayne's world. This is what? World. You got the fish world. The animal world. Right? Let's not, let's not lose focus on who the Lord came and died for. He came and died for his nation of people. Right? Not meaning can't nobody get down. We always reinforce that. But don't lose focus on what this is all about. Alright, Shalom, y'all. Most I be with y'all. Alright, alright. Peace and love, too. Alright, come on, brother. Verse 17. Hold it down, y'all. Ain't got nothing to talk. For God sent not his son into the world to condemn the world, right. but that the world through him might be saved. He might be saved. See that? Y'all write down Isaiah 45 and 17. The world that will never end is Israel. The world without end. Alright, John 17 and 9. I pray for them, I don't pray for the world. You feel me? So, and right now, uh, John 18 and 20. Let's get it done, brother. Verse 18. He that believeth on him is not condemned. Uh, but he that believeth not is condemned already. Did that say already? Already. You hear that, brother Bob? Mm. He that believeth not already condemned. You feel me? I'm gonna be wasting my time spitting and smelling hot breath. Right. If somebody ain't, he don't believe. The scripture say what? He's condemned already. That's right. May the Lord spur him and he can recover from all the grips of Satan. But if the Lord don't call me, he comes in. That's right. He wants you. Right. Too bad. All right. So I tell you right there, he that believes not is so condemned same. already. Right. Come on, brother. Because he hath not believed in the name of the only begotten Son of Yah. The word name is authority. Character. You don't believe in the office name, the authority of Christ. He's not a messianic same way. That's right. Right? Say so you can damn. That's what the scripture say. Oh, I feel the swallow. The Bible comes off like that. What's going on? I thought it was all flowers and you know, it's right. all good. There, in other words, look, there's a consequence in not getting down the program. And that's, that's all right. we be trying to get our people to see. Repent. Why? Because there's a consequence if you stay on the other side of the fence. You will be fooled for the words. Right? But today they come up all oh, God is not with you. I, was, I, don't, I don't hear love coming out. What do you what, what? Hey, what do you what do you think love is? If I love you, wouldn't I warn you or yell at you, hey, get out the street. They speed down the street, you're going to get hit. I'm going to say, brother, hey, watch out. Get up the street. Me and Maya. Me and Maya, get up the street, brother. Please. I beseech thee. Huh? I do I say, boy, get out the street. See, because when you got to come off and raise your voice and tell you something, people confuse that with hate. That's not hate. Let us love you enough to tell you, hey, watch out. If you continue like that, the Lord has spot you. If I continue in what I so love, uh, this is the light that's against him. The Lord has spot you. That's right. It, it covers all spectrums of 
All right, come on, brother, let's get verse 19. And this is the condemnation, that light has come into the world, and men love darkness rather than light, because their deeds were evil. Deeds were evil. 